In the searing heat of an ancient desert, under layers of dust and forgotten ruins, a genetic secret has awakened. A secret that could rewrite the very first chapter of human civilization. For centuries, scholars believed they knew where it all began. Mesopotamia. Sumer. The cradle of humanity, they said. But what if they were wrong? What if a land farther east, older, richer in genetic complexity, was the silent architect behind the first organized society on Earth? A recently unearthed DNA sample from a skeletal fragment, hidden for over 8,000 years, has sent shockwaves through the scientific community. The genetic markers do not match the dominant theories of human migration. Instead, they point to something unexpected, a forgotten lineage, a connection that leads straight back to the Indian subcontinent. Now, experts are asking a bold, unsettling question. Could the roots of the very first civilization be found not in Mesopotamia, but in ancient India? The implications are massive. The timeline of history might be wrong. Entire narratives may collapse. So now we ask, did ancient India truly influence the world's first civilization? For decades, the dominant narrative has remained unchallenged. Civilization, as we know it, began in Mesopotamia around 3300 BCE. There, in the fertile crescent between the Tigris and Euphrates, the Sumerians built cities, invented writing, and structured the first known bureaucracy. But to the southeast, the Indian subcontinent was not silent. By 2600 BCE, the Indus Valley civilization flourished. Larger, more organized, and technologically advanced in ways the Sumerians were not. Cities like Mohenjo-daro and Harappa revealed stunning architecture, sewage systems, and standardized weights. Yet historians kept India in second place, chronologically younger. But now, cutting-edge genomic studies from remote burial sites in Iran and the Arabian Peninsula are revealing a disturbing anomaly, an ancient DNA signature that predates both Sumer and Harappa. And it's linked to populations from India's western coast. The mystery deepens. Did India play a foundational role in humanity's rise before recorded history even began? This isn't just about shifting dates. It's about resetting the origins of civilization itself. It started with a routine excavation near the ancient site of Balochistan, close to the Indo-Iranian border. Archaeologists were investigating a Neolithic burial ground when they unearthed something unusual a remarkably well-preserved human skeleton, buried in a fetal position, surrounded by pottery shards and fragments of obsidian tools. At first glance, it seemed ordinary, but carbon dating revealed a stunning truth. The remains were over 8,500 years old, older than any urban site in Mesopotamia. The team, suspecting significance, sent bone and tooth samples to a genetic lab in Copenhagen. Weeks later, the results arrived, and they stunned everyone. The genetic sequence didn't align with known Mesopotamian or Near Eastern lineages. Instead, it displayed haplogroups found predominantly in the Indian subcontinent, specifically from populations near the present-day Konkan coast. Even more shockingly, these genes matched ancient DNA from early human remains found in the Fertile Crescent, suggesting long-distance movement or influence. The first clue had surfaced, but what did it mean? Driven by the genetic anomaly, an international team of geneticists, linguists, and archaeologists launched a coordinated investigation across three continents. Their goal, trace the origin of this mysterious Indian haplogroup and its possible journey westward. They began reanalyzing ancient DNA samples from Mesopotamia, Iran, and the Levant some stored for decades in museum archives, others freshly extracted from remote dig sites. The team employed advanced genome sequencing and a powerful AI-driven algorithm to map gene flow across millennia. 
patterns began to emerge. A specific mitochondrial lineage, long considered isolated to coastal western India, appeared sporadically in ancient skeletons buried thousands of kilometers away, in Iraq, Syria, even as far as southern Turkey. How did it get there? Some historians speculated ancient maritime travel along the Arabian Sea. Others pointed to prehistoric trade routes through Baluchistan and the Iranian Plateau. But one thing was clear. This wasn't random. These weren't isolated migrants. It looked more like a sustained presence and, perhaps, influence. But the world needed more than suspicion. It needed proof. In a secure lab in Cambridge, a breakthrough was unfolding. Scientists had successfully extracted nuclear DNA from both the Balochistan skeleton and several Mesopotamian remains dated to around 4000 BCE. Unlike mitochondrial DNA, which traces maternal lineage, nuclear DNA reveals deeper insights, ancestry, traits, and genetic drift across populations. And what they found was astonishing. Multiple genetic markers, rare, specific mutations, were identical between the ancient Indian and Mesopotamian samples. These weren't superficial similarities. They pointed to a shared ancestral population that had existed before the rise of the Sumerians. Even more shocking, isotopic analysis of tooth enamel suggested that some individuals buried in Mesopotamian sites were not born there. Their chemical signatures matched geological profiles from India's Western Ghats. Peer-reviewed papers were published. Conferences erupted in debate. Had history overlooked an early Indian migration that seeded the genes and possibly the ideas that formed Mesopotamia? One headline read, India's ghost civilization may be the true cradle of humanity. Now, the question wasn't just if it happened, it was how. Picture this. 10,000 years ago, long before Sumer rose from the sands, small coastal communities in western India began to flourish. They fished the Arabian Sea, crafted obsidian tools, and developed early agricultural techniques. But they didn't stay put. Driven by climate shifts, resource needs, or ambition, these early people began a silent migration, first along the Makran coast, then inland through the Iranian plateau. Over centuries, they left traces, seeds, pottery styles, genetic signatures. They brought knowledge, not just presence, techniques in irrigation, early symbols of record-keeping, sacred cosmologies later echoed in Mesopotamian myths, by the time the Sumerians carved their first cuneiform tablets, echoes of Indian influence were already buried beneath their cities. Not dominance, not conquest, but inspiration. A genetic and cultural undercurrent that helped shape the world's first civilization. The journey wasn't a single event. It was a flow of generations, moving across time, across deserts and rivers, across history itself. The maps of prehistory are being redrawn, and the arrows now point east. If the genetic trail is to be believed, the foundations of civilization may not lie where we once thought. Beneath the ziggurats of Sumer, beneath the myths of Enki and Inanna, there runs a deeper current, a genetic whisper from ancient India. Not in conquest, but in contribution. Not in written records, but in blood. For centuries, history spoke only of what we could see. Now, DNA speaks of what we never imagined. What else lies hidden beneath assumptions? How many timelines must be rewritten? As science pushes the boundaries of archaeology, one thing becomes clear. Our story is far older, far more connected, and far more mysterious than we ever believed. So the next time you hear the phrase cradle of civilization, remember, the truth may lie not in a single birthplace, but in a network of ancient minds scattered across deserts, rivers, and seas, long before we knew what civilization even meant. If you're fascinated by these forgotten origins, 
Don't forget to like, subscribe, and explore more stories that challenge everything we think we know. Because history doesn't just belong to the past, it belongs to those who dare to question it.